Hey folks, if you're following Langflow's updates, there is a lot happening. There are new features added, there are new components added, there are new integrations. So one of the best ways to follow along is to go to the Twitter handle for Langflow or X handle for Langflow, which is at Langflow underscore AI and follow to get all of the updates. And one of the recent launches was for Langflow 1.5, where there are quite a lot of new things those were added so wanted to give an update on what is added in addition if you were to go to the change log for langflow in the open source repo you'll notice that there is a lot happening here as well where we have our amazing community members providing suggestions or feedback as well as adding some code which is merged into the open source langflow and in addition you'll notice that there are also many bug fixes and changes so this video is going to be an intro to the latest version of Langflow. So first off, if you were to install and run Langflow, and this is a local version that I am running using the GitHub repo, you'll notice that there is the option for flows as well as the MCP server. So this is something Langflow team is actively working on to make it as easy as possible to connect with MCP servers as well as use Langflow flow as an MCP server. So we'll get to that in a minute. As soon as you start a new flow, this is similar to what we had before. We're going to start a blank flow. And first thing you'll notice is the side menu. It's a bit consolidated now. You'll find a lot of components now categorized into either some of the top sidebar options or if those are part of the bundles then those are available below these are integrations with third-party providers so there is a lot available already as components here and of course if you want to build your own custom component you can start with a new custom component so i'm going to start with building a flow quickly and this is similar to before where we can bring in a chat input and chat output or you can bring in a text input and output connect with either an agent or a model and i just want to bring a model in this case attach the input as well as the output and i'm going to provide a simple message that you are a helpful agent now with this i can go to playground say hi and this is going to call the openai gpd4 mini model and you get a response back now the interface here is quite similar to chat gpt or any of the chat ai assistants where you have the threads on your left side this is the history you can start a new session and it is going to pull up or you can go back to any of your old session rename them and in the message area as well you have an option to attach images or you can use the voice feature now logs for your previous runs are available on the right bottom corner where you can see results for pretty much all of the components so in this case we had the chat input which took some value as input and then also provided some output same thing with the language model component it took some input available here and then there was the response which goes to our output which was pretty much what we saw in the playground now these chat input and output are not expanded by default so you can always expand and see what's going on and same thing you can see what was the output as well as the logs for this particular component now bringing in some of the latest components those were added to langflow one of the component added was new search so this is something recently added now we can easily add a query here and this query could be added manually or we can add a component here so we can attach it to the chat input or some sort of text input and we can get some results and you'll notice that it is quite fast and we get some results so searching for a lang flow we get all of these results now there's an option to narrow it down we can go by a certain language country or some sort of topic or a particular geolocation. Now I'm gonna bring in a prompt template. And for this particular template, I'm gonna quickly add some prompt here. And this is gonna be instruction to our LLM saying that we have a search query and then we get some results for it. And these curly braces is gonna open the prompt variables where we can add some variables. Now first thing, I wanna bring the result from news article to the results here. But we noticed that if we were to try to attach this, it's not gonna work because this is expecting a data frame as output. So if we were to click, we'll notice that we have some options here. So I'm gonna bring in data frame operations and this is one of the components which was upgraded in the latest version. 
So I'm going to attach the articles to this particular data frame input. Now I wanted to select a few columns because I don't want to include the link or any other additional columns. So I'm just going to go for the title, the published date, as well as summary. So those are the columns I typed in here. And I want to freeze this because I don't want to keep running the search every single time. So I'm going to select this freeze option and then I am going to select the columns. Now these selected columns, I can click again. So it is gonna pull the data frame. And now I wanna convert that to a different type. So with this type convert, now we can convert this to an output, which is gonna be compatible here with our results. And that is message. So I'm gonna connect the input as well as here. I'm gonna add the results to the message output. And since we want the query as well, I'm gonna bring in an input component and attach it here. So with that, now I can supply this lang flow as input to new search, as well as I can provide that to our query. And now since I wanna attach the message directly to the prompt, which already taken out for us, I'll modify the prompt a little bit. I'm basically saying that you are a helpful assistant. Please summarize all of the news results. So just a simple prompt there and with that we have everything needed to run this flow and now i'm just going to run the output which is going to run all of these components and you can visually see which component is running now we can check the output to see the results and we have the results of the summary of all of the news articles now i want to modify this flow a little bit so that our input is directly as chat input so i'm going to take this out and add the chat input directly to our flow so we can remove that input as well so this is going to be the one word search for us and now a couple of things that we can do one is that we can share this flow with api access and this is going to make it easy for you to call your flow from either python application or javascript or you can just call using curl and then connect with any front end or back end framework now other thing i wanted to mention is the mcp server and this is where it gets quite interesting now what i want to do is i would like to change the name i'm going to call this new summary and i'm going to save that and with that we have a flow as a tool so we can use langflow as an mcp server supplying tools within any of these platforms and now you have an option to auto install to cursor cloud or windsurf or you can just use the json option so why not let's start with something simple as the json so i'm going to copy this and i am opening the desktop version of cloud and in here, if you have used any of the MCP tools, you probably see it in the tools option. So I had a few before, which are showing up here. Now for anyone starting new, or if you want to modify the available MCP servers, you can go to settings for Claude. And in here, you can go to the developer option and you can edit the configuration to add a new MCP server. Now this is going to open a JSON file, which which we can use any of the IDEs or to keep it simple, we use text edit. Now I am gonna add one more MCP server here, which is the Langflow server. And with that, I am gonna save this file and close and also close the clock desktop. And now with that, we should be able to see our Langflow as MCP server. And in here, I can see all of the flows which are in Langflow. And with the new summary option, I can ask about about the latest on any topic. So I am curious about the Grog 4 release and what is mentioned in the news and probably have to allow for use of this tool. So I trust this tool, so I'm gonna always allow it. Now Claude is providing the input value to Langflow and Langflow provided the summary here, which is for all of the latest discussions on Grog 4 model. And now within Claude, we can see exactly what was discussed about the topic. And this is just one particular component. Of course, if we have an agent, it can perform additional tasks and provide us with more details. So this shows you power of using Langflow and the agents as well as the tools within Langflow to make an MCP server, which you can now connect to your favorite tools. And this includes any of the coding IDs or tools like Claude.
Now I want to quickly run through some of the other available tools. So I am going to duplicate this flow that we had earlier. And within this flow, we're going to look at how one could use the, the web search as well as the RSS reader. So for the RSS reader, you're going to need a feed and provide that URL and it is going to pull all of the data for you. For the web search, this can help your agent pull data from the web. And same as before, you can provide your search query and you'll notice that the the web search is going to be active and it'll provide you with the results. Now, any of these tools, if you like, you could use in the tool mode, which enables our agents to use these tools. And it is as simple as dragging and dropping an agent and connecting with the tools option for the agent. So now you can have a nice prompt saying that if there is a need to use web search, then it could utilize this tool. If there is a need to use the RSS reader, use the RSS. And in cases to use the new search, it could reach out to the new search. Now, one bundle I wanted to highlight is the Docling component bundle, where there are a few different components here. This is, of course, built on top of the open source tool Docling, which can help parse many different formats of documents, especially if you see there are some document formats, PDF, DocX, PowerPoints, but then there are also some other audio Audio formats and then images available. So this is a robust tool that you can use for many different type of documents and files. Now to learn how to use Docling and the different components, there is a detailed video in the Langflow YouTube channel where Melissa explains how to use all of these components individually as well as using in pipelines like RAG or with Agent. Definitely check it out. Now one last thing I wanted to highlight is the option to add MCP tools to your agent. Now it's quite easy to add a new MCP server where you can pretty much add JSON for the server or use standard IO or SSE, any of the options. And you'll notice that all of the different providers for MCP servers, they're going to have documentation as how you can add it. And once you add the server, you can connect this particular tool. So I added a server here. This is the fetch MCP server. It's quite easy to add. I just use the UVX command for it and the documentation is available if you were to search for MCP fetch server and you'll notice that there is the UVX command and that's exactly what I brought in here. And the first time you save it, you might not see it right away, but if you were to refresh or reload, then you'll notice that the MCP server is going to be available in the drop down. And you can select the MCP server and then select the tool if needed and then test it if you like. Now, in this particular case, I asked for it to fetch data from langflow.org and I ran it and it was able to pull the content as text from Langflow's website. And now I can use in my flow as a response, or if we want, we can use this with an agent. Now agents are smart and they know what tools are available and what actions they can take. They are pretty much gonna run the tools as needed. So I can now attach this to the tools for the agent. And if there is any need to perform any data fetch for a URL, then it can utilize this tool. So this definitely makes it easy for us to add a new tool. And we can always go to the settings and within settings, we can go to the MCP servers and configure any of the MCP servers, update them if needed, edit them, or if we want, we can add some more servers as well. Now, definitely this was quite a long video covering some of the basics of the new version, as well as the components added. There is always a lot added every week. So make sure to follow the social handles to get the latest updates. Excited to see what you build.